I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. In this reaction, we're taking this cyclic ketone, heating it in the presence of ammonia, and it rearranges to form this ring contracted cyclopropyl amide. The first step in this reaction is going to be that ammonia will come and attack the carbonyl carbon, kicking up the pi electrons to make a negatively charged oxygen. And our charge is still going to be balanced because now what will have happened is that the amine portion of our functional group will be positively charged. So all of these other substituents, the bromide and the methyl group, remain the same, except now we have this negatively charged oxygen with three lone pairs on it, and now we have this nitrogen which is going to be positively charged because it's got four bonds to it. And from here, all that needs to occur is a proton transfer where you would abstract a proton from this NH3 group, and then subsequently you would protonate the negatively charged oxygen to make an alcohol. So following those two proton transfers, then what we end up with is a completely neutral molecule, where again that oxygen has now been turned into an alcohol, and this ammonium group has now just become NH2. And then our other substituents, the methyl group and the bromide, which are on opposite faces of the molecule indicated by the wedge and the dash, are still present. At this stage, our nitrogen has now become neutral and it's got a lone pair on it. So what can happen is that lone pair of electrons can come down to form an aminium ion where you're forming a new carbon to nitrogen double bond. And what this is actually going to do, because that would end up with five bonds to carbon, is actually going to break open this ring, where the electrons contained between these two carbons will actually come down, forming a new carbon to carbon bond between one two, and three carbons. And that's actually how we form the cyclopropyl ring. In addition, that's actually gonna kick off our bromide, which is why we don't end up with an alkyl bromide in our final product. So then the product of this reaction is going to now be a three-membered ring, where you still have the methyl group attached to it. And on this side is where you will end up with an aminium ion, because you have now formed a new carbon to nitrogen double bond, which is gonna be positively charged, and you still have this alcohol coming off of it as well. And now from here, we do the exact same thing that we did previously, where we did two proton transfers to exchange a proton between the ammonium and the negatively charged oxygen, we'll actually end up doing the same here, where now we can do another subsequent two proton transfers to end up with our final product. So again, both of these stages are just a series of proton transfers, where a proton gets abstracted from one of the functional groups and then placed on, on a subsequent step on the other functional group. And this is so ubiquitous in chemistry that we often just write proton transfer instead of drawing out those individual steps. So then to recap, what we have is a nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl group generating this negatively charged oxygen, subsequently undergoing a series of proton transfers that will allow us to eventually form an aminium ion where the nitrogen lone pair of electrons will come down. And this will actually serve to break the carbon-carbon bond that gives rise to that four-membered ring, where these electrons will actually come down to help us form our three-membered ring or our cyclopropyl group. Subsequently, another series of proton transfers ends up getting us this cyclopropyl amide. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this organic reaction. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.